In this lesson, we're going to look at a couple of different definitions of acids and bases. There are actually several, but we're going to focus on two. One is the Arrhenius theory, and that's the one most people are familiar with. And then we're going to talk about the Bronsted-Lowry theory, which is actually more relevant to what we see in biological systems. So we've previously talked about the difference between strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Remember that strong electrolytes dissociate completely in water and we see our uh, one direction arrow here. So things like HCl, which is a strong acid, it will completely dissociate into its ions. Weak acids are weak electrolytes, meaning they do not completely dissociate. So something like HF, which is a weak acid, we use our equilibrium arrow. Remember that means the reaction is actually going in both directions, but only a small fraction of our molecules actually dissociate into the ions. Now people say, well how do I know the difference between the strong acids and the weak acids? Well there are only six strong acids. So we have HCl, HBr, HI, perchloric HClO4, HNO3, and H2SO4. And if you know the six that are strong, then any other acid is going to be weak. Notice that our acids here, when we look at the examples in our problems as well as down here, all start with a hydrogen. So that's always a pretty good clue that we're dealing with an acid. The one key exception to that is water. The formula starts with an H, but it is not an acid. So one thing we see a lot of when we're dealing with acids is something called the hadronium ion. And when we see the hadronium ion, this is technically what it is. And we show it in various ways. We show H3O+, H+, and proton. So anytime you see any one of these, it really means the H3O+, but we're just not showing it. Because you will never have our H+, all by itself in solution. It will always go to a proton, or to a water molecule that's already there and form this H3O+. We also call this a proton. So think about when we have a hydrogen atom, how many protons and electrons and neutrons we have. So a hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons. When I go to H+, plus, the plus charge forms a cation, which means I'm losing an electron. So when I lose an electron, I end up with one proton, no electrons, and no neutrons. So this is frequently called a proton, but again it will always technically be H3O+. We just show the H+, because it's easier to write. Now in this structure I'm actually showing you some things about the three-dimensional shape, and we haven't gotten into this. We'll look at this more when we look at some other molecules later on, but what we're seeing here is that the lines here represent anything that's in the plane of the screen or the paper that this solid wedge means something is coming out toward you, so coming out away from the screen or the paper, and the dashed line means it's going away from you, that it's going back behind the screen or the paper. So we will see this some, but we're not yet having you draw these molecules. So let's look at the definition of an Arrhenius acid and base. And this is one you've probably heard before if you've had any chemistry. And if you haven't, that's okay. But what we're showing here is our molecule HCl plus H2O going to H3O plus and Cl minus. And so what we say is that in water, an Arrhenius acid will produce H plus, which really means H3O plus, because remember these are equivalent to one another, they mean the same thing. So an Arrhenius acid produces H plus in water, and if we look at Arrhenius base, it produces OH minus in water. So sometimes this is through things like sodium hydroxide or NaOH. Sometimes it's by the way it reacts and produces an OH minus in the final solution. So for NaOH, we might see something that dissociates into Na plus plus OH minus. So both of these are considered Arrhenius bases.
So now we need to look at a slightly different definition. And so we're going to talk about a Bronsted or Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. Now note that there's nothing that's considered an Arrhenius acid that's a Bronsted base or vice versa. If it's an acid, it's going to be an acid under both definitions, but there are also some compounds that aren't able to be classified under Arrhenius that can be classified under the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So it's a little bit broader definition for Bronsted acids and bases. And it also looks at things within the context of a chemical reaction. And so in this case, if I look at my, formula, my equation, I see I have an NH3. This is a water. And notice we're calling water an acid here, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Here we have our NH4 plus and our OH minus. So what we're looking at here is our Bronsted acid is a proton donor. So that means something that's giving up an H plus giving up that proton. Okay, so we'll see it as an H plus. And so when I look at my equation, I'm going to look at my reactants first. Notice there's an arrow here, just like we saw with weak electrolytes, that's an equilibrium arrow, meaning the reaction is actually proceeding in both directions. But I look at my NH3 versus my H2O, and I say, well, how does the H2O change as it goes from the reactant side to the product side? So I say I'm going from my water over here to the base, okay, this OH minus, because what I see is that these are the structures are the most similar. I can't go from an H2O to an NH4. I'm looking for the things that differ from one another by a single proton. So they differ by a single H plus. Okay. And I notice that when I go from the water to the OH minus, what I see is that I've lost an H plus. And so that means that this is a proton donor. Okay. So this is referring to the water on the left side of the equation. Now, when we look at the OH minus, okay, if we look at what's happening when we go in the opposite direction, so if I'm going from the OH minus back to the water, we say this substance is accepting a proton because we go from OH minus to H2O plus. So when I go backwards, I'm accepting a proton, and so therefore this substance, the OH minus, is acting as a base. So we say this is a Bronsted-Lowry conjugate acid-base pair because they go together, they differ by a single proton, and that's a key thing, is that they must be just differing by one single H+. If I went from H2O to O, Two minus, they would not be a conjugate acid-base pair because they differ by more than a single proton. And we're going to be doing more examples on these, so I understand this can be challenging for some students, and we'll be seeing this again. Now, let's look at the NH3 in going from the left side, the NH3, and I want to find the thing that differs from it on the other side of the reaction by a single proton, and that's going to be the NH4+. plus. So we have gained a single proton and so we're saying that the NH3 is acting as a proton acceptor. So it's acting as a proton acceptor, and so that means it's going to be a base because a Bronsted base is a proton acceptor. When I look at the NH4 plus on the other side, what I see is that now the NH4 plus, if I go back to the NH3, is now acting as a proton donor. And therefore, will be classified as an acid. And those two together, the NH3 and the NH4 plus, are known as a conjugate acid-base pair.